Good afternoon, and thank you once again for tuning into my channel. Today I'd like to talk about elevators and elevator technology, particularly answering the question, um, you know, when was the first elevator designed and built? When were elevators first installed in buildings? And again, I'm piecing this together a little bit, so I thought I'd just start off with a series of images that I saved, and I'll begin talking about them. I'll get into the discussion after I show this picture presentation. Okay, so this is 1865 in Richmond, Virginia, and this is a Civil War image so if you get a Civil War book chances are you know if you've got lots of pictures in the book you'll see this image it comes up uh, you got a very muddy landscape not too sure how that happened but the very basic point I want to make is this is 1865 how many stories do we have on this building so I count at least one I think this is the ground floor one two three four five six seven eight nine eight or nine. So we've got eight or nine stories on a building back in 1865. This is the first time I've actually mentioned it, but Baltimore had a disaster in 1904. So this is uh, maybe 15 years after elevator technology was first installed in buildings. At least the first electric elevator was installed in 1890. I'll get to that later, but let's just look at this building in the background in 1904 in Baltimore. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 story building in 1904. I'm not saying this is not possible, but if this is going to fit with official history where we have elevators sh first showing up in the 1890s, then this building has to be no, no older than 15 years. Again, this is in Baltimore in 1904. Always strange with these buildings, they seem to be much taller than is required for the average size man. But anyway, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six stories on this building. These are different shots of Baltimore. Uh, got some mud flood evidence here. I already counted the stories on this building in a previous image. We said it was 13 stories. Again, this is 1904. But even still, even on this building, it looks like there's some signs of mud flood. Can't tell with all this demolition imagery. I've got some general questions and even doubts about the nature of these old images. They've got like sections which are hazy, and then you've got other sections which are more defined. So my first instinct when I see this is that it's somehow photo edited but I'm not gonna speculate further or I'm gonna get away from my topic this is from the great earthquake in 1906 in San Francisco so um, I, I looked at this building here this is about 12 or 13 stories this is in San Francisco so this building, according to official history, with elevators being introduced in the 1890s, electric elevators, um, this building can't be more than 15 years old. This is, again, San Francisco, 1906. I'm not yet sure how I'm going to tie it in, but um, overhead cranes, which I'm assuming is what these are, um, they're very similar to elevator technology where you have a cable and a winch and an electric motor pulling things up. So that's also important because if you take a building like the Waldorf Astoria in New York that was supposedly built in 1892. I've got to double check on that. But you know you have these big massive tall buildings and so I can only assume that they built them with even taller uh, mobile cranes with you know, a cable and a motor on them, which is similar to elevator like technology. Okay, and this is uh, the San Francisco earthquake.
Chicago Fire Aftermath State and Madison Street and you know if we think of this first floor as maybe three stories then it's like one two three four five six seven stories maybe maybe six stories I covered this in a previous video on Cincinnati this is has this has a some pretty good signs of mud flood I'll count the stories so we have one two three four five six seven eight stories on this building and this building was built in 1878 this came up in my previous South Bronx New York video and here's Jimmy Carter in about 1980 1981 on Charlotte Street in the South Bronx addressing all the fires that are have taken place in the Bronx for the last 10-15 years and uh, interesting here we've got like a different foundational type of uh, probably looks like field stone or rubble stone uh, bricks but we've got one two three four five six stories and this seems to be about as high as um, Bronx apartment buildings go up. They go up about six stories and that's it. I haven't found any that are seven stories. So once again we've got mud flood era buildings. Who knows if these go back way back as far as the 1860s or whether these, these other brick structures were built on top. I can't figure that one out but um, supposing they are true mud flood buildings you know completely pre 1860s then we have uh, six-story buildings in New York that are mud flood era did they have elevators and elevator shafts I don't know yet again this is more South Bronx I'm not sure the year on these buildings but we've got some pretty good indications that you know mud flood because you've got first story windows so close to the ground even along here and the street even slopes up this way a little bit so this store this building is one two three four five six stories that seems to be typical though they don't seem to go more than six stories in New York New York not in South Bronx this is also South Bronx one two three four five six and you know one of those image companies that sticks their name on all the old images that they probably don't even own I just blocked that out okay so I cut off the image a little bit but it says Morris High School 166th Street at Boston Road Bronx New York City these are very tall stories if you look at the, the height of the people here you could almost estimate these floors to be about 15 feet and anyway one two three four five maybe six stories here's another postcard of Morris High School in New York some signs of um, inundated windows unfortunately I cut the image off down here a little bit but one two three four five six seven eight I don't know probably six stories we can call this okay I'll zoom in just a little bit so this is St. Francis Hospital which I guess is in South Bronx uh, stands to be fact-checked a little bit but how many stories one two three four five six but what's really more interesting to me is that like this is a hospital and do you really want hospital patients having to walk up uh, stairwells to get to the sixth floor unfortunately I didn't get a year for this I should probably go back and look as to when this was built okay so this is the skyscraper Masonic Temple in Chicago and it's from it was built apparently in 1892 so here you have a building that comes two years after the De Marais building which according to one Wikipedia article which I'll get into later 
um, the first electric, I think the first passenger ele elevator or first electric elevator was built in 1890. Uh, as we'll get into, I think the history actually extends a little bit further back. But anyway, you've got um, 18, 19, maybe even 20 different floors depending on how you want to count. But even the lowest number, 18 floors back in 1892 was pretty impressive and I'm almost certain that you know something like this would have had an elevator because who wants to walk up 18 stories just to get to where they live or I don't know maybe these are offices I don't want to digress too much but the official story for this building is that it was built in 1892 and it was demolished in 1939 I'm digressing, but that in itself is a little bit strange as to why after only, yeah, I did use the calculator, uh, 47 years you would destroy a building like this. So you built it in 1892 and then you destroyed it 47 years later. Uh, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. This is Chicago and this is the Rookery building and it's from 1886 and the number of stories here I kind of cut off the bottom story but uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 stories, 1886 I will point out that the foundational layer or level is a little bit different from the upper levels I don't know if that's significant but it caught my attention this is a souvenir that I think you can probably buy, you know, maybe if you visit the building. I'm not sure where this comes from. But it was neat because it had a, you know, statistic on the side there, 181 feet for this building, 1886. Here's the Wikipedia article for this building, the Rookery Building, 1886. It was built, and it was built by Daniel Burnham. Now that's almost a whole different tangent in and of itself. But if you click on Daniel Burnham, he's built, like, a ridiculous number of things. He was involved at the uh, World's Columbia Exposition. I think that's Chicago. Yes, this is the Chicago World's Fair. And I don't want to go too much in depth into it. Yeah, he built the Masonic Temple building in Chicago. But he built, like, this ridiculous list of buildings that are all attributed to him. So he had a very busy career. But not only that, he was involved in city planning of um, Manila and Baguio. There's even a park there that recognizes him. This came up in the Cincinnati history. The Alms and Depke building was not built by him, but many other buildings in Cincinnati were built by him. Okay, so my point was that this uh, rookery building was apparently uh, designed by Daniel Burnham. And here's just an older image of it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 stories. Okay, here's the Waldorf Astoria building in New York. Now what's a little bit confusing is that there was a newer uh, Waldorf Astoria building that was built. So I I don't know, I can't claim to really have completely uh, sorted this one out, but I guess this one we're looking at here is from the 1930s, but the original ones go back to 1893 and 1897, so I'm going to try and get a picture of those. But this is the Waldorf Astoria from 1893. It's, I'm going to get into this a little bit later, but well, here's a picture of it. This is, um, I don't know, is this a mud flood floor? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So we have 11 or 12 floors on this building. And this is 1893. According to Wikipedia, what they had said about the De Marais building, that which is a building also in New York, very close to this one. Now uh, there's another building with the supposed first passenger elevator from 1890. So you had the first official elevator in 1890 and then in 1893 you've got the Waldorf Astoria which is like, I don't know what I say, 12, 
12 stories. So did this have electric elevators designed in it? And that's a very short timeline. So between 1890 and 1893, uh, this would have had to have been first designed and then built and then finished in 1893 to have a building with an elevator in it. I'm assuming this did have an elevator. Sorry, maybe I'm not being clear. But my point is, is that uh, does this fit into the timeline of when elevators were first uh, being designed into buildings? Okay, so this building lasted for 36 years before they decided to raise it. I'm going to read this just so I don't misquote it. The Waldorf Astoria originated as two hotels, one in 1893, one in 1897, built side by side by feuding relatives. I don't believe that story. Sounds silly, like all of them. On Fifth Avenue in Manhattan, built in 1893 and expanded in 1897, the Waldorf Astoria was raised in 1929 to make way for the construction of the Empire State Building. Could it be that they used this bottom structure to build the Empire State Building? I don't know. I'm just speculating. Maybe I shouldn't make such wild claims before I actually investigate them. But anyway, uh, 36 years. They built a beautiful building like this and tore it down 36 years later. Crazy. Uh, here's a last last thought I had about this. Supposing this had a modern elevator, um, fine. But to build such buildings, they usually build tall skyscrapers like this with tall tower cranes. Now a tower crane is technology very similar to an elevator. It's a cable connected to a motor. So might I assume that to build such a building you would have to have a taller uh, mobile crane not a mobile crane, but a, a construction crane that would actually assemble this. So you'd have to have an even bigger crane. So I guess, uh, well, I won't get too sidetracked from my main topic, but yeah, I I could almost make a future video on construction cranes and, and the earliest ones of those. Okay, I'm backtracking a little bit. But I just want to go back to the Masonic Masonic Temple in Chicago because I did find a a website that discusses this, and I'll leave this in the link in the description below. A little bit sloppy of me, but I haven't read this all yet. Again, it's a, a Daniel Burnham building, and they're just, you know, just I'll just get these images into the video, and maybe I'll come back and read this later. But just showing the size of this compared to the Statue of Liberty maybe the tallest ferris wheel but here's uh... what looks like to me uh... elevators inside the masonic temple in chicago okay i'm gonna read this really quick the general dimensions are only one hundred and seventy feet front and one hundred on the thirteenth floor depth it is the front which appears in our illustration the entrance is beneath a grand okay whatever uh... back of this great court is a sort of semicircular elevator Sorry to get impatient there. Again, I can only record videos in five-minute segments because I have the free trial software. So that's why I started talking fast. The entrance is, a, is beneath a granite, archy 40 feet high and 38 feet wide, and opens into a, rotund, a great rotunda, lined with Italian marble and opening upward through the 20, through 20 stories. Ornamental iron staircases lead up from either side, Back of the great court is a sort of semicircular of elevators, arranged lights in a bay window. There are 14 of these uh, elevators, lining an arc 50 feet deep and 70 feet cord. Who talks like that? The court is 70 feet each way, square, so it's 70 by 70, in front and semicircular in the rear, the rear lines being determined by the elevator fronts. Uh, my point is that in either 1891 or 1892 when this was built, it had elevators inside it. And this is a, what do we say, how many stories? 20 stories? Oh, okay, I've got some more description. The elevator system is the largest in the world. 14 passenger elevators are capable of carrying 100,000 persons daily, and the pumping apparatus used in connection therewith is capable of supplying water every day to a town of 60,000 inhabitants. Okay, what I haven't determined is whether these elevators were steam-powered, and yes, apparently that historically uh, there were steam-powered elevators. They seem to predate electric ones. 
I'm not sure that's actually what this is saying. I'm not sure that's saying that these elevators are steam powered or hydraulic powered. I'm not sure. The wire rope used in the elevators would, if stretched out, reach a distance of 16 miles. The safety chains used in connection with them would, if no one, if in no or if in one length, stretch over three th or four thousand feet almost. Okay. The amount of water that passes through the pumping machinery every day would make 240 feet long, 100 feet wide, and 150 feet deep. If the distance traveled by the 14 passenger elevators was in a continuous, the elevators will have traveled the enormous journey of, okay, 100,000 miles over. Uh, okay, there was uh, used in construction of the building 4,700 tons of steel, lots of fireproofing. Okay, the Capitol building, which was which as the Masonic Temple was for decades Chicago's most famous building is being torn down. The wrecking job is a substantial one. Physically the structure is sturdy. The walls and floors are virtually as sound as they were in 1891. Elevators and other facilities subject to regular inspection have been kept in safe condition. This is from a newspaper article in Chicago. There's an image here. I'll try to get this as a link in the description below. Okay, so moving forward, my picture presentation took twice as long as I thought it would. But now I'd like to get into the history. And this is just what I could piece together from various different Wikipedia articles. And I've just taken the essential information that I think is, is important to learning about the history of elevators in big buildings and I've condensed it so it's very choppy and I haven't tied it up all nice and neatly together but uh, it does give the main facts so without wasting any more time I'm just going to read love in an elevator living it up when I'm going down love in an elevator loving it up till I hit the ground songwriters Perry Anthony Joseph and Steven Tyler. Okay, so again, the main question I wanted to answer uh, was when was the first elevator designed and built, and when were elevators first installed? Okay, and that's why I did the picture presentation because those were all very tall buildings, and I tried to find very old, very tall buildings just to get things into perspective. Okay, Okay, so in my previous videos, you heard me talking about a certain book, uh, America, a narrative history. So I'm going to rely on this once again because it had a good summary of uh, old technology in old buildings. On page 781 in this book, it says, Several technological innovations allowed cities to expand vertically to accommodate their surging populations. In the 1870s, developments in heating, such as steam circulating through radiators, enabled the construction of large apartment buildings since fireplaces were no longer needed. In 1889, the Otis Elevator Company installed the first electric elevator, which made possible the creation of taller buildings. Before the 1860s, few structures had gone higher than three or four stories. After and during the 1880s, engineers developed cast iron and steel frame construction techniques. Because such materials were stronger than brick, they allowed developers to erect high-rise buildings. Okay, once again, most of this information was taken from Wikipedia. I'm just going to read. The Otis Elevator Company is an American company that develops, manufactures, and markets elevators, escalators, moving walkways, and related equipment. A pioneer in its field, Otis is the world's largest manufacturer of vertical transportation systems, principally focusing on elevators, moving walkways, and escalators. The company pioneered the development of the safety elevator invented by Otis in 1852, which used a special mechanism to lock the elevator car in place should the hoisting ropes fail. So, kind of interesting, not only is the most famous and world-renowned elevator company uh, called Otis, but Otis was actually there at the beginning, according to official history. Okay, I'm going to skip the the narrative of Elisha Otis himself. I don't think it's very helpful. So anyway, in 1852, Elisha Otis invented the, sa the safety elevator, 
which automatically comes to a halt if the hoisting rope breaks. After a demonstration at the 1854 New York World's Fair, the elevator industry established credibility. Otis was founded, this is the company, not the man, Otis was founded in Yonkers, New York in 1853 by Elisha Otis. This is a very important area in New York because it's very close to a lot of the General Electric uh, manufacturing and I think Thomas Edison and it's also close to Schenectady, New York which is connected with um, somebody like Steinmetz and even Tesla if you've heard of those names before. Okay uh, then there was in one of the articles uh, there's a great image and I had to show it. This is the Otis elevator in Glasgow, Scotland imported from the US in 1856 for Gardner's Warehouse, the oldest cast iron fronted building in the British Isles. So, so this is a little unusual because now we have an elevator that was imported in 1856. That's not really jiving with the official history that elevators were first developed in 1889 so I'm confused already. But anyway uh, and, and there's different technology for elevators. Some were saying that uh, the original elevators were steam, and then only later did they introduce passenger elevators with safety locks on them that were that was that were electric. That was in the 1890s. Here in the UK, Otis is branded as Evans Lift. Notably, an original Evans Lift is still in the Silver Arcade in Leicester. The this is from a Wikipedia article. The De Marais Building is a multi-purpose commercial building located at 339 Fifth Avenue in the borough of Manhattan, New York City. It was built by Aaron T. De Marais, or De Marist, in 1890 in the downtown Commerce District to showcase the high-end carriages that were manufactured. Carriages meaning uh, cars, and I don't know if that actually means electric cars, but anyway, motor carriages. The De Marais Building is notable for being the first with an electric elevator. The building with the first electric elevator was on Fifth Avenue directly across the street from William Waldorf Astor's mansion. Not the Waldorf Astoria but his Will, William Waldorf Astor's mansion where the Waldorf Astoria hotels were later built. Okay so then I guess the original mansion was torn down and then the hotels were built and then they were torn down and the Empire State Building was built strange strange history okay uh, Wikipedia explains this picture the one I'm showing now after the 1853 New York World's Fair offered Otis a great chance at publicity at the New York Crystal Palace Otis amazed a crowd when he ordered the only rope holding the platform on which he was standing to be cut the rope was severed by an axe man and the platform fell only a few inches before coming to a halt the safety locking mechanism had worked and people gained greater willingness to ride in traction elevators. These elevators quickly became the type in common usage and helped make present-day skyscrapers possible. Ch okay, I'm just changing the subject completely and uh, talking about Charles Proteus Steinmetz. And this is from a separate Wikipedia article on him. Charles Proteus Steinmetz was a German-born American mathematician and electrical engineer and professor at Union College. He fostered the development of alternating current that made possible the expansion of the electric power industry in the United States. I thought that was Tesla, but apparently it's Steinmetz. Okay, so Steinmetz formulated mathema mathematical theories for engineers. He made groundbreaking discoveries in the understanding of hysteresis that enabled engineers to design better electromagnetic apparatus equipment, including especially electric motors for use in industry. We can probably safely say that that's for elevators, right? So uh, Steinmetz um, is credited with credited with increasing motor efficiency and he did that not through trial and error but creating mathematical formulas to um, design and build motors so that probably saved a lot of money when he could just design things on paper and he helped the nearby Otis Elevator Company uh, if you look in my research videos and the link in the description below um, there's a bit of a history with Steinmetz and Otis Elevator
Okay. Uh, it also said in that article that Steinmetz was called upon to convert trolley cars from DC to alternating current. Now that could be a whole different avenue for investigation in and of itself because uh, there's something strange and funny about these old trams and trolley cars that seemingly rode along uh, uh, tracks and you know say in a rainstorm how do you not get arcing from one track rail to the next so there's some I, I would challenge the idea that the DC trolleys were running purely off of the electricity running through the uh, rail lines I think it's possible that the old trolleys were running with some type of atmospheric electricity but that's a whole different investigation okay on the Wikipedia article for elevator so I looked up elevator on Wikipedia and there's a separate article it te it, it tends to suggest that uh, steam elevators go back into the 1820s and there's a whole messy historical account but that about sums it up okay this is sort of important the hydraulic crane was invented by Sir William Armstrong in, in 1846 primarily for use at the Tyneside docks for loading cargo right uh, that's important because uh, it seems like some of the old elevators were at least hydraulic or maybe steam powered it's not so clear but we do have elevators in the official history which I don't believe half the time now uh, in 1846 okay the first the first electric elevator was built by Werner von Siemens or Werner von Siemens in 1880 in Germany the inventor Anton Freisler developed the ideas of von Siemens and built up a successful enterprise in Austria-Hungary. The safety and speed of electric elevators were sig significantly enhanced by Frank Sprague, or Sprague, who added floor control, automatic elevators, acceleration control of cars, and safeties. The elevator ran faster with larger loads than hydraulic or steam elevators, and, in f and 584 electric elevators were installed before Sprague sold his company to the Otis Elevator Company in 1895. Sprague also developed the idea and technology for multiple elevators in a single shaft. Now this is a little bit messy and confusing because I thought that um, somebody like Schuyler Wheeler was the guy who developed the first electric elevator but now we have Werner von Siemens creating the first elevator in 1880 but then officially according to the one Wikipedia article the first elevator shows up in a building in 1890 in the De Marais building so okay so the first electric elevator was built by Werner von Siemens in 1880 okay well, what did he do with it he stored it away somewhere or like was it installed in a building this is unclear but then only then after 10 years later we have the first electric passenger elevator showing up in a building in New York so uh, this is a little bit funny that like Werner, Werner von Siemens develops the elevator in 1880 and then we don't see it installed in a building until 1890 and then we had this strange history if you go back and look at uh, Elisha Otis apparently he through trial and error uh, developed and created the first elevator and went on to build the Otis company but then we have this other history which is suggesting that Werner von Siemens and Anton Freisler sold this Siemens elevator company to Otis in 1895 so uh, we basically have conflicting history and it's messy and I don't know what's the truth here so uh, I think I've caught some errors um, and it's a really messy one to try to figure out if you had the patience for it Okay, in 1882, when hydraulic power was well established, technology, a company later named the London Hydraulic Power Company, was formed by Edward B. Ellington and others. It constructed a network of high pressure mains on both sides of the Thames, which ultimately extended to 184 miles and powered some 8,000 machines, predominantly elevators and cranes. You'll hear me if you watch my research videos first reading this and coming across this information this blows my mind I had never heard of this before we have steam powered elevators in 1892 in London and these steam lines went under the river and it powered technology along the river 8,000 machines I've never heard of this before I don't even know what to make the make of this I haven't rec reconciled this in my own mind it's like what when did this happen I've never heard of this okay I think I'm beating the point to death now then I came across um, another article 
that talks about somebody named Skyler or Squealer or Schuler Wheeler and he yeah, I think it's like Schuler Skates Wheeler. It's got a funny name. And he patented his patented his electric elevator design in 1883. I think he's associated with Thomas Edison and General Electric and even light bulbs. But uh, that's worth investigating all on its own. But here we have a definitive statement of a uh, specific man patenting an electric elevator design in 1883. Okay. Uh, coming to the end here of all, all the reading. Sorry, I know it's a little bit dry and boring, but I also came across uh, this page. It's the Equitable Life Building, which was completed in 1870 in New York City, is what was thought to be the first office building to have passenger elevators. Now this is conflicting because I thought it was the De Marais Building in 1890. But maybe this Equitable Life Building, completed in 1870, having the first passenger elevators. Maybe we're not talking about first electric elevators. Maybe this was like a steam-powered elevator, and I think that's what it is in this case. But, you know, the history is messy, right? So 1870, 1870, we have the first passenger elevators. Okay, however, Peter Ellis, an English architect, installed the first elevators that could be described as paternoster elevators in Oriel Chambers in Liverpool in 1868. Okay, so we have elevators in 1868 that are the first in Liverpool. Are these steam power? Are these electric? I'm getting confused now. Okay, the Equitable Life Assurance Building was the headquarters of the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Construction was completed on May 1st, 1870 at 120 Broadway in Manhattan, New York City, and under the leadership of Henry Baldwin Hyde was the first office building to feature passenger elevators. So this is 1870. We're, we're bringing the date back to 1870. That's not what the other Wikipedia article said. It said 1890. Okay, anyway, this is talking about the um, Life Assurance Building. At a record of 130 feet, it is considered by some as the world's first skyscraper. The architects were Arthur Gilman and Edward H. Kendall, with George B. Post as a consulting engineer, hydraulic elevators made by the Elisha Otis Company. So now we're talking about... Uh, now we're attributing this to the Elisha Otis Company. So I guess these are hydraulic elevators. I don't know. I think the main thing is that Elisha Otis was um, credited with the safety locking mechanism. That's really his invention. But I suppose these are uh, steam-powered. But anyway, uh, no matter how messy this history is, maybe in the least we have like elevator shafts as far back as the 1870s, making skyscrapers three or four stories somewhat possible. So <coughs> okay, so that's very messy history. I'm not sure I've even made sense of it, but I've dropped the information. It's now all contained in one video. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, it was a bit of a task and chore to get through this material, so I don't know if you've enjoyed listening to me rant on. Uh, it's uh, kind of tied my own head up in knots. But I guess to sum up and give some kind of concluding statement. So now, if you're looking at old mud flood buildings, and they're very tall, and you're looking at the foundation of them, uh, here's one more thing to consider when you're looking at these buildings, and that's the height of them, and you know, officially elevators were present in 1890, uh, but maybe 1870, it's unclear. So, yeah, thanks for listening. Thank you.